The birds are chirping. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day to practice. Let's get to it. Welcome to today's guided practice session. My name is Adam Manis. Today, we are going to be practicing some left hand voicings. These are voicings that were made famous by the uh, great, and I truly mean this, one of the great innovators of jazz piano in the 20th century. We just lost him this past year. It seems like years ago because of how this year has gone, but the great McCoy Tyner, of course. Um, and this was really his thing, these voicings and, and things that sounded like this. These are the voicings that we're going to play today are left hand only that we would use to support ourselves when we're soloing or playing melodies with our right hand. They're used in all kinds of situations, but we're going to use them in a modal situation today, which is where you would hear McCoy use these a lot in things like his famous Passion Dance uh, from the Real McCoy album or any of his work, really, uh, in John Coltrane's quartet, you know, be that Love Supreme or Crescent or any of those. He, uh, he used these to great effect. And we're going to do a very simple version of these because we're just starting out with them. So I'll explain what they are. These are sometimes ca called fourth voicings. These are sometimes called quartal voicings, as in quart, like four, because they're built in fourths. If I bring up here the key of D minor, this is a D Dorian, right? A D minor seven based on the Dorian. And the Dorian, of course, is the second degree of the major scale. In C, the Dorian is built off of the D, all white keys on the piano, right? So if we start on the root, which is D down here, and we just build up going in fourths. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, our first voicing is D, G, C, as you see here. This is our quintessential quartal or fourth voicing on a D minor. And if you play then a D minor pentatonic scale over it, well, then you get the full effect. Now that alone sounds brilliant. It sounds angular. It sounds like it needs to resolve somewhere, but it never does. Uh, it, it sounds just very McCoy too. It has that sound that we love so much, but it doesn't end there, right? Because we can just, an easy way to kind of get through these uh, is you can just move them diatonically. Diatonically means within the scale, right? So if we're in our D Dorian scale, all the white keys starting on D, from D to D, and we move this up, all of these work as well. Some people call this planing, I've heard. One rule I'm going to put in effect for today is I don't want to go above middle C with my pinky. So we're going to stop there no matter what. But luckily in D, this covers all the options. Now you would hear McCoy do this again with maybe a D minor pentatonic in our right hand. Could also do like other pentatonics. You could do C pentatonic as I was doing, or G or A minor. There's several pentatonics that you can play over a minor minor chord, but I'm just gonna, I'll just kind of center around D minor pentatonic, right? D, F, G, A, C, that five note scale. Literally, my left hand is just going through the white keys in fourths. Ah. That's that sound. It's so cool. It's so much fun to play. So that's what we're going to practice today. Very simple. You don't even actually have to like really go through each voicing. If you can kind of get the key in your fingers, right? If you can get that Dorian in your fingers, it's easiest in D, right? Because it's just all white keys. You just do fourths. Herbie in there if you want. Uh, but you can just take that through, again, planing is what some people call it because it's all on one plane. But you're just taking it through diatonically. So let's start by starting. Let's just start getting these in our fingers, practicing planing itself. We're just gonna do, at first, 
left hand only. Don't even worry about soloing. We just want to get these through. So we're going to go up. All seven notes of the scale and back down. Play with me. One, two, three, and. focus on the notes we're playing here. That's easy enough with these white keys. Focus on each finger playing at exactly the same time. I'm not really doing any particular fingering. Sometimes I'm the middle note I'm changing between the third and the second to get a slightly more legato sound, but because they're in fourths, you can't really do anything with the top or bottom note, really. You could maybe do five, four on the bottom, but I don't know if that really matters. The way this is used, I think it's easy enough to just use the same fingerings and just move it around. Try it again. One, two, three, and four, and. But we do want to practice making sure that each one is struck, each finger is struck at exactly the same time. We don't want any of this. You know, we don't want any sloppy sams up in here. Real crisp. I mean, that's the whole vibe of these voicings. Super crisp. Not like that. <laughs> Crisper. Play this with me. C, B, A on the bottom. One more time. One, two, three, and four. enough, right? Okay. Let's practice. We're going to keep the metronome right here, but we're going to change this metronome. This is now beats two and four. I'm going to walk a bass line. I don't want you to do anything with your right hand just yet. We're still working on getting all seven of these in our, our left hand, just as the voicing. So I'm going to walk a bass line fairly slowly. Right? Not two, just kind of like medium. So we're going to practice four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Just practice moving around. You could practice skipping some. Also very handy. But you can also just practice going in a row, too. Varying your rhythm like you're comping. Practice comping with this. Skip. All right, so I'll accompany you. Metronome is on two and four. I'm playing quarter notes. Let's do it. One, two, one, two, three, and. So there we go. There's our first attempt at doing some planing, right? Using these, boy, I got a new seat, so I gotta get a little comfortable here. 
uh, using these voicings to great effect. So now let's try throwing in some right hand with it, right? This is easy enough to do on our D minor voicings because again, it's just fourths all on the white keys. Now we want to maybe focus here on, you could use the D Dorian to practice improvising, but let's try doing a pentatonic sound, right? Maybe pick our D minor pentatonic, D, F, G, A, C, and you could practice in just groups of four is the easiest way for pianists. These just lay so well in our hands. And however you want to phrase it, you can spin it any way you like. All right, let's give it a go. I will accompany you again. Make sure that you're planing again with these fourths in your left hand and simple in your right hand. We really want to make sure that we're not sacrificing the voicings that we're working on to try to like have a cool solo. Really focus on putting that right hand in when it can get in. The, the practice here is training our brain to go between the two. Let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, and. nice hopefully you found in combination of those fourth voicings in our left hand and that pentatonic scale in our right that we get that nice mccoy-ish angular sound all right that is our first key we're going to take it up a fourth because that's what we're doing today so this is g minor seven so now imagine that we're on the g dorian scale we're going to add one accidental a b flat right so our G Dorian scale is G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. So our G minor uh, fourth voicings are built the same way. Just now we have that B flat in play, right? So G, C, F, right? Built in fourths is our first one. And we can just move that up, that G Dorian scale. Now again, I don't want to have my pinky go above middle C on this. So once I get to the C, F, B flat, I'm going to take it down. Right? This is such a good one here. F, B flat, E. Crunchy. With a tritone at the top, it's crunchy. You could go lower for sure. You can go C, F, B flat down here. You could go even B flat, E, A. That's not going to sound good on a Hammer 88, but on a real piano, it would actually sound pretty cool. Right? So here is our first one. Let's try going in this pattern I have here. We'll go up the first four and then jump down to that D on the bottom. Just play quarter notes with me. One, two, three, and four, and jump down here to D, and then back down, up starting on G, jump down, three, and then turn it around. One more time. are just fourths built on the G Dorian scale. So it's all white keys except for that B is always flatted. And that's how we can start these. 
Again, we'll maybe use our G minor pentatonic, G, B flat, C, D, F. Again, like sometimes up here isn't gonna sound nearly as good as down here with these. One kind of uh, touchstone that I use for these voicings is a good place to start with them. If I'm starting the plane of it is either starting with the root on the bottom, like here, this position, or with the fifth. Both good places to start. Okay, so we've done our up and down. Let's practice just, again, the same pattern as before. We'll just do the left hand only. Just practice comping. I'll walk a bass line on G minor. We're just worried about these voicings that you see on your screen right now. Comping with them. Do your own rhythms. This is two and four. One, two. A one, two, three, M. Again, you can do some skips. You can go just straight up and down diatonically. The thing to do here is really experiment. See what lays well in your hands and your ears. Just doing left hand now, getting them comfortable. So good to get these in your right hand too. You can practice them in both hands because in your right hand, they sound great up here and you can break them up. And they sound awesome. Okay, let's practice our right hand. Let's do that G minor pentatonic, G, B flat, C, D, F. Again, if you don't play a lot with pentatonics, consider just using like four note groups of these. It's like an easy way to kind of get into it a little bit. All right, and then with your left hand, but really what we're focusing on here is the left hand. So really focus on getting the voicings together. Simple improvisation with your right hand. Let's try it. One. Two, one, two, three, and. on the left hand more than the right hand. Let's see if you can work some of that pentatonic sound into your right hand. One of the hardest things to do is to play over one chord and make it sound good. So, so nice. 
All right, I'm going to give you one little trick here. I need to hydrate my fingers. One little thing to help us, right? As I mentioned, one of the hardest things to do is to play over one chord. And there's some things we can do to make this a little bit easier and to provide variety as we're shutting over one chord. With these voicings, it actually becomes super, super easy. Let's say that we're on G minor seven. We're on G minor seven. And we're on these voicings that we were just working on. And we're playing that G minor pentatonic. Kind of at will, we can take it outside of this G minor just a little bit. The first way that we usually do this is up a half step on any of these voicings and this scale. Again, take your cue from McCoy, who was a master at this. What happens here is you can do simple patterns, like something like, and then do it a half step up, and then go back. So practice that as, we, as we're working through these other keys. Consider this neighbor a half step up to be our best friend, right? It's an easy way to slip in and out. It's an easy way to make one chord, two chords. Um, you, you wouldn't want to spend a ton of time like up a half step from what everybody else is doing. You probably wouldn't want to like start your phrase or your solo. I mean, you could, if you're, if you're good, you can pull it off. But you, it, when you're first starting this, you might not want to start or spend a ton of time in that half step region, but it's a great way to just kind of slip back and forth. Okay, that's our second key. We're gonna go up another fourth, again, in honor of the fourth. But really this is down, C minor seven. Again, this is the C Dorian. We have an E flat and a B flat, right? So C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. This is a C minor seven chord based off that Dorian. Our fourth voicings, we want to start on the C. And we just move them up that C Dorian, right? So there's an E flat and a B flat. And again, we can start with that C minor pentatonic, C, E flat, F, G, B flat as our kind of solo jumping off point. And again, as we're going through this, remember, the region just a half step up, D flat, is fair game to kind of take us out and bring us back in. All right, let's just practice these voicings. We're just gonna practice them, getting in our hands just up and down these seven chords. One, two quarter notes, three and four and. With each accidental, it's a little bit harder get further and further outside of just all white keys. We have to know the key we're playing in. Just keep looping this scale up and down. No sustained pedal. Let your fingers stay on these keys as long as possible. Again, because of the shape of the chord, it's going to be hard to do anything on that top note to make it sound more, more legato. I do kind of like to go between in my in the middle note, just to make it easier. If it's on a white key, I'll use my third finger, and then on a black key, I'll use my second. It's because you can get like an easy transition between those two. So I will walk a bass line over C minor. You practice these chords, comping them in different rhythms, really getting used to each one of these shapes. Practice going up and down this scale, practice doing some skips, right? Super important to be able to do some skips. Practice going up into that D flat region or C sharp minor, right? Practice is kind of going up and back. It, when you go up, you wanna go back usually. Or keep going up, D flat, C. 
you can keep and move up almost chromatically using this concept. All right, let's try it. I'll walk the bass line. Left hand only at first here. One, two, one, two, three, and. It's a chromatic thing up and down. All right, got it. Let's try using our right hand. We're gonna do some simple melodic content around this line. Again, it should sound not like you're trying to do some crazy McCoy fourths, uh, you know, pentatonic solo, but really that we're working on these voicings and that we're practicing mixing in our right hand like this. to go crazy is there though okay i understand let's try it one two one two three and these fun these are so much fun and so easy to get once you kind of understand that we're just taking them through each one of these dorian keys all right we have two more keys to go how about f minor again we're adding an accidental with each one of these because we're going up in the circle of force so if we start here on f right an f dorian scale which is what this f minor 7 is based on is f g a flat b flat c d e flat and we're back at f I got it. 
So we'll just go up. Let's see if we can go right into this, right? Uh, and again, I really don't want to put my pinky above middle C, so I'm going to shift after these first four down to C in my uh, down low in my pinky. Let's try it. One, uh, one. Yeah, quarter notes. One, two, three, and. Shift down. Up. Shift down. Back down. Ah. It's a challenging shift. Again, some of our touchstones for this can be with the root on the bottom or the fifth. In my right hand, I'm using mostly the F minor pentatonic scale. Right, F, A flat, B flat, C, and E flat. Hey. And I want to practice that planing. And it's almost unnatural to do what we just did, where we start on, I just wanted to demonstrate starting on the root, but here, you know, you, you could just start, you should go C to C, right? But you're in the key of F, so there's those three flats, uh, B flat, E flat, and A flat. So let's just practice again, just like we did the other three. Let's do left hand only at first. I'll walk a bass line. This is two and four. Practice getting to know these F minor voicings in a good range of your left hand. Let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, and. Hopefully you got some good work in on those left hand voicings alone. Now let's do it with some right hand. We're going to do that F minor pentatonic scale, F, A flat, B flat, C, E flat. And these voicings are just ah, chef's kiss with this. And again, you can always move these up to that half step above. In this case, F sharp minor seven. Do 
doing little patterns like that is really, really fun. Let's try it. But again, we're focusing mostly on the voicings here. Left hand, left hand is our focus for this particular session. Let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, and. Okay, we have one more key queued up, key of B flat. Let's do it. Now we have four flats. So we'll start all the way down here, right? B flat Dorian, B flat C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat is our scale. And we just simply move this up and forth. B flat, E flat, A flat is our home, kind of our home base voicing, right? And we just move this up, that B flat, Dorian scale. Let's practice going up and down with just these notes, quarter notes. Two, three, and four. And. Juicy. Back down. Again, focusing on playing these even. This is a challenge because we're going to have a combination of black and white keys here. A combination of keys that are going to need to be deeper into the key bed. You might have to curve your fingers a little bit more than say if you were playing in D so that you can get a nice clean crisp sound and that every note is struck at the same time. It's definitely harder than D. And let's add another layer of this, of concentration. See if you can line up exactly with the click track. Exactly. I can. I can. Ooh. Hey, hey, hey. So... The challenge of this is really getting some of those those black key and white key combinations to strike at the same time. That's what I want you to work on here as we go through it. You can comp with your just your left hand only at this point. I will walk a bass line, but just practice getting to know these voicings in all of these positions and really practice trying to make them sound good, right? That's as important as getting the right notes. Let's try it. One, two, one, two, three, and.
Vamos lá, mais. Now again, this B flat is really fun to take up because especially on some of these voicings where you have all black keys or two black keys, going up to B minor here. Really, really sounds awesome. I mean, it's really kind of easy to do. Probably the easiest of all these. Okay. One last play along practice with me. I want you to incorporate some of this B flat minor pentatonic. That's B flat, D flat, E flat, F, B, uh, A flat. Back to B, almost a, almost a blues scale, right? Just without that flat fifth. Practice mostly thinking about your left hand voicings and see if you can do some of that slip sliding up a half step. fun. Just keep it basic. See if you can do it. Let's go. One, two, one, two, three, and. Awesome. One more thing to think about with this too is you might hear McCoy do something as he's playing these voicings, right? Something that's typically done is what we might call dropping the bomb, a fifth, B flat and F in the key of B flat minor, right? Dropping that fifth, letting it sustain, just punching some fists in there really uh, will help get that sound. Hope you enjoyed this practice session. We're going to leave this up on YouTube, so this should be up here uh, indefinitely. So come back to it if you need to. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can leave some questions here in the comments, and I'm happy to get to them. And until next time, happy practicing. Thank you all. Thank you for practicing with me today. Hope you had a good session. That was super fun for me. Take care, everybody. I'll see you on Friday. Uh, actually, I'll see you tonight. Uh, we're doing a listening sesh. We're doing Herbie Hancock's Secrets, one of my all-time favorite albums. Me and Peter Martin are going to listen to that. Come listen with us. And until then, I'll see you later. Bye.